Now let's focus on learning how to define functions within MySQL. Routines represent either functions or procedures. So those are stored functions or stored procedures. Both are stored on the server in different tables. Let's go over some of the basics after labeling the section. So stored functions, which is the second type of stored routine. Now there are many basics to understand, but basically what you should know is that stored functions tend to return scalar values. They're ideal for, for performing calculations such as date or string or numeric type calculations and returning scalar values to be used by other procedures or select statements or in other contexts. Usually you're going to execute a function as part of a select statement or as part of a stored procedure. So first let's look at the table where you're going to find the functions on the server. As you know the MySQL database houses all of the system applicable tables, permissions, and the like, including users, etc. So let's use MySQL and show tables. The MySQL database consists of many grants tables, but there's one important table that pertains only to functions, and it's called func. Similar to proc or pros is a table which houses stored procedures. Func houses functions. A select star from the functions table will reveal zero for user-defined functions. By the way, this particular table houses user-defined functions, not MySQL system-wide functions, of which there are many. And we'll look at two, for example, including concatenation as well as using date diff when defining a user-defined function. So our func table is currently blank, which means nothing's defined. What is the syntax that's required when defining a function? Let's show you that syntax. So functions syntax resembles the following. You're going to execute a create, of course. That should come as no surprise. Create function followed by func underscore name or function name followed by the parameters. You need at least one and we'll list that as func underscore parameter and optionally additional parameters which will specify using brackets comma and an ellipsis to indicate that this is optional. You definitely need to specify at least one parameter in order for your function to perform its duties. When you call your function you use the select statement and you pass in at least one value for the function to operate on. So let's note that functions require at least one argument or parameter. So create function func name followed by the parameters that the function is to operate upon. After you've defined this section, you're then going to indicate the type that's returned by the function. So you'll specify returns type. This is a requirement in the syntax. Now functions may accept one type and spit out or reveal another. For example, when you perform a date calculation like a date difference, you accept date as the input but return perhaps an integer as the output. So you need to indicate to the create function statement what this particular function will return. So that's very important. After you've gotten through this required section, then you simply execute what's needed to execute to return your value such as return and followed by perhaps one of the predefined MySQL functions which we'll show you how to use. So we'll say return followed by function operation which simply means to perform the work of the function. So the syntax is basically create function followed by its name at least one parameter indicate the type that the function returns very important followed by what is to be returned by the function. Now within functions you can define variables, you can execute statements and so forth, but you must indicate the type that's returned and you must return a value to the caller and the caller is the user executing the select statement. Now what is a basic example of a function? Well there are many. For example select current user. Select current underscore user is a built-in function. Notice it takes no arguments. 
but it does return who you're currently logged in as because that's how the pro the particular function has been programmed. So that's an example of a function. Select database is yet another function, a system function, which tells you the currently used or currently entered database. Those are some examples of functions. But then there are other functions such as count, where you select count star, and star is an argument. So when you say select count star, you're parsing you're passing into the parser star or asterisk as the lone value indicating all. So it's a keyword or a synonym for all. Super. So that should be pretty straightforward. Now we're going to create our first function. We'll call it SF as a prefix just for nomenclature purposes, but it could be called anything. We'll call it hello whatever, which is the standard hello world type function. So let's go ahead and define a create function statement followed by SF underscore. We're using SF to represent stored function as opposed to stored procedure when defining stored procedures. It's simply for consistent nomenclature, but not a requirement of MySQL. So create function SF hello whatever. We're saying hello whatever because the whatever portion will be variable. Followed by whatever is to be specified in the parentheses, which includes at least one variable. So we'll accept the variable, which we'll define as arg1, argument number one, and its type. So between the function parameter or the description of a function parameter is its name followed by its type. We should list that. Func underscore parameter, similar to procedure parameter, represents or is equivalent to parameter name followed by parameter. So we'll say parameter name and parameter type. Of course, type is obviously related to the type supported by MySQL, integer, decimal, string, and so forth. Strings meaning car, var car, etc. So you need to specify the argument or the name of your parameter, which we're calling arg1, followed by its type. And this is the variable that will be received by the function. So if we're going to submit a string, then we should specify a type that supports strings such as car of our car. Let's go ahead and simply specify car. We'll go with car 10 because we'll just give some simple values. And this is what is to be accepted by the function. An argument of or one argument of car type type. So it's in a car type. And then we'll specify what is to be returned. We'll return a character yet again, so car, and we can extend the length since we're going to perform a concatenation within this particular function. So we'll return a length of 20. We'll accept 10, but return 20. Next, we follow up with what we return by executing a return, followed by a built-in MySQL function. One of the built-in functions is called concat for concatenate. We've used it, and we're going to use it again we're going to prefix whatever is submitted to the function with simply hello such as for hello world so we will prefix by specifying single quote followed by hello closing the single quote then a comma followed by the placeholder for the argument which is going to be simply arg1 we don't need to place between single quotes the name of the variable that's used internally within the function so we're going to concatenate hello, which is our string that we're forcing, with whatever is received by the function and stored in argument one for the duration of the function run. And that's all we need to do. So once we've defined this function, it's accessible to us within the database. Let's go ahead and define it. Now again, similar to stored procedures, stored functions are database dependent. They're tied to databases, but can be called from any database. So be careful what context you're in, and we'll, do, we'll switch our context by executing a use HR. Now we'll execute our create function, and if there are any errors, we'll debug, but there are none. So we'll just simply execute a show, instead of procedures, functions, status. This returns the function that's tied to this particular database, rather than directly from MySQL. 
So here's the function, sf underscore hello whatever, which we're going to execute momentarily. And as you can see, it's not stored in mysql.func. It's actually s revealed using show function status. We can execute this function, not by using call, but by using select. So let's go ahead and give this particular function an initial value of world by executing select, and it's case insensitive, followed by the name of the function, and in between parentheses and in between single quotes, we'll specify the string that is to be inserted literally into the function. Let's simply specify world, and what will be returned is simply hello world. Hello world with no spaces. Now that's because the function is defined without any spaces. We called it hello whatever, and in between we didn't specify a space between the two arguments. If we had just included a little space, then the output would have been presented properly. But nonetheless, the concatenation has been performed, indicating that the function works correctly. Now we can pass any value into the function, and it works as expected. Super. So that's a basic function. To drop function, simply execute a drop function followed by the function name. In this case, it would be sf underscore hello w underscore whatever. And this will remove the function from the system. We could redefine it by pasting in our syntax. That's a little bit about a basic function, which relies upon an internal MySQL function to do its work. Functions don't necessarily need to call built-in functions, but they could, as we've illustrated, which also means they can call other user-defined functions, providing the caller has privileges. Now the next function that we'd like to define is based on a predefined MySQL function called date diff. So we're going to task create a function that will return the employee's age in years. And we'll also do so for one in days as well. So years and days. So we'll create two functions. So create two functions or create functions that will return this information. How would we go about doing it? Well, before committing any syntax that will actually update your functions table, or before actually committing it, you should test any functions that are built into MySQL. If it's already there, but you intend to use it slightly differently for the convenience of your user community, test it first, and then commit it to the database. In order to test date diff, we'll select date diff. Now our intent for date diff or intent for our employee's age is to be able to quickly tell the age of an employee which could later be included into a procedure which updates a table for a given column for example by referencing the function. So you may have, if you recall, before we select this, let's just show you what we have. We'll select star from employees and you'll see that for each employee we have their date of birth and it is a required field and based on that requirement we can run a predefined or user-defined function that will perform an age calculation on the user's age. So here is that date of birth column, and we know date diff will tell us the answers immediately, but we'll nest it into our little function to be able to tell the age. So a select date diff followed by the arguments required by date diff Date diff requires two arguments. On the left, we'll specify the current date in any format that you that MySQL will understand, such as YY, YY, followed by MM, followed by DD for the 19th or today. Let's just confirm the date, the 18th. So we'll go with 0218. That's the first value, and the second value that's required is the date to be differed or to perform the difference against, to perform the subtraction against. So we'll be subtracting the right from the left, the left being the current date and the higher date. So on the right, let's go ahead and specify my date of birth, and we can use any format that we'd like, such as what's in the column currently. And MySQL will understand it and perform the difference for us. Notice we specify two formats. one without any delimiters, the other, similar syntax but with delimiters. Notice that the default for MySQL is to return the number of days since the date that we performed a comparison against. 
So if we wanted to see how old I am, for example, we could simply perform a little math. In addition to doing a date diff, we'll divide the difference by an average number of days for the year, such as 366. This returns that I'm 30.4372, which is accurate. So having said all that, we know that the date diff command works seamlessly, and all we'll need to do is create a function so that we can variableize this information to make it easy to execute it either from the context of a trigger, a stored procedure, or just by the user using a client such as MySQL's terminal monitor. Additionally, we could substitute into the date diff function the now function. So you can nest functions. For example, a now open close paren would suffice. It returns the same result. So that's something else to keep in mind. You can nest functions and MySQL will take care of expanding the expression for us. Super. So how do we wrap this into a function that's usable that'll return the number of years a given person is? Well, we want to take the syntax that's defined for date diff and then include it into a function that we define. So let's take this date diff that we have right here and we'll go ahead and create that function using a create function followed by the name of the function let's call it sf underscore age underscore in underscore years which will return the number of years that a given person or any date diff that's performed is so sf age in years followed by a variable to hold a date so we'll just call it d followed by its type date this is what it'll expect followed by the fact that it returns an integer because it doesn't return a date it returns an integer followed by return and the actual function which is date diff and we could specify now comma instead of a fixed value of 1975-08-20 just simply d so let's look at this again when we call the function we're going to provide one value currently until we define our next function which will be interpolated into this variable called d or stored into a variable called d d will then be used locally within the function within the date diff call date diff will subtract D, whatever D is, whatever we give, and it needs to be a legitimate date format understood by MySQL, it'll subtract it from now, whatever now currently is. When done, it'll divide by 366. And what's returned is the output of the function, which is usable, again, in triggers and in stored procedures. So let's go ahead and create this particular function. We'll paste it, and now we have a new function. If we show function status, like how we would with show procedure status, you'll see that we now have this function and it is the SF age in years, which means we simply select it. So select SF age in years, open close paren, but we must give it a value. If we don't give it a value, notice it says incorrect number of arguments, it expected one but got zero. So the one value that we do need to give it that will specify in between single quotes is the actual date that is to be preserved and let's specify that date the date again is going to be stored in the right side and will be subtracted from the current date so we can pick any of the dates from the database let's start with my birth date and we'll specify it as 1975 forward slash 08 forward slash 20 which is the format YYYY MMDD notice what's returned 30 now you may also notice that the decimal has or the decimal isn't reflected so the number of values beyond the decimal point isn't reflected and that's because we defined this function to return its results in integer and integer doesn't represent the number of values beyond the decimal point we'd need to use float or decimal to represent those values that's not a big deal. We'd simply need to change a function. But the bottom line is, by submitting my birth date, birth date that is what is returned, is the number of years that have elapsed since my birth date, birth date, which is a correct, which is 30. Let's go ahead and submit something else. We'll submit 17, 1974, 816, and you'll see it returns 31. 
And rounding, of course, takes place. So if we were to divide in our function by 365, values would be rounded up versus 366. So if you want precise values, use floating point for your, your return type or decimal, followed by the precision after the decimal point, of course. Now how about if you wanted to control more than one value within the function? Since we haven't really shown you that, let's show you how it would work. Currently, the function accepts only one argument. That's the date that will be subtracted from the current date. But what if we wanted to also influence the number of days in a year? We could treat this certainly as a variable by redefining the function or creating a new function. So let's redefine SF age in years to accept D comma date as well as days in year as an integer. It could also be a tiny int which would cover the values. And we'll indicate that it returns integer. And instead of dividing statically by 366, we'll divide by days underscore in underscore year. So what will happen is we'll be required when we call the function to supply two values. Those two values will be stored in D and days in year. And then the date diff command will perform its division as well as subtraction based on D as well as days in year. So let's go ahead and execute all of this. First we'll execute a drop function sf underscore age in years or we could have altered the function. That works as well but since this is so small we'll just go ahead and drop it followed by a recreation of it. And if we execute a show function status you'll see that the new function is defined and we'll go ahead and select it again without the proper number of values or arguments. Notice we specified one this time and the MySQL interpreter complained because it expected two but got one. Which means we need to follow up with the second value by separating by commas the two values or using commas the two values followed by single quotes to terminate the value and, and to preserve it literally. So now we want the year to be based on 365. And notice it's rounded up 1974, 08, 16 up to 32 because really the age is 31 point something over 5, over 31.5 causing the rounding up. So now we're specifying two values and it works well. If we treat a year as having 366 days, the user is still considered to be 31 years old. So we're close to that halfway point. We've submitted two values nonetheless, which was essentially what we wanted to do. Now again, we mentioned that you could change the return type to be decimal. Any supported type is sufficient. So if we take this, let's drop again and just make a slight change to return a decimal with a certain precision. So that's a decimal and we'll make that decimal to be a total length of perhaps five and the number of digits beyond the decimal point can be three so it'll be 2.3 since most users won't live to be a hundred or we could make it six comma three allowing for three three so let's go ahead and make it six comma three in the event that folks do live that long and now we'll have our new uh, function defined we'll copy everything into memory and then re-execute. Now we have a new function defined. We'll need to recall it using our select statement. And notice that the decimal output reflects a more accurate value. In this case the user is actually 31.445 based on the number of days in the year being 366 but if we base it on 365 the user is 31.532 all by changing the type to decimal rather than to integer. Super. Now select or show warnings that is will show any warnings corresponding to the recent run. And it says the data truncated for column which was expected, but that's fine. Nonetheless, it's returning accurate values, and that's how you define functions. So you create functions using a similar syntax, and you specify at least one argument. You also need to specify the type that's returned, and then you go ahead and perform whatever is allowed within the function. Now, by no means have we covered everything that's allowed, because you can define variables, you can make certain calls using various SQL statements, but as long as you return the appropriate value, 
you should have no problems in the functions that you define. But differentiate between functions and procedures. Procedures are more like scripts that execute on a server. Functions are more like quick ways of gaining access to specific scalar values such as the age based on the date difference and so on. So that's a little bit about executing functions. Of course, consult the MySQL reference manual for more information and other sources in the event that you want to extend the functions capabilities.